Hey, my name is Doublelift from TSM, and this is my basic champion guide to Twitch. I'd rate Twitch probably a 6 or 7 out of 10 in solo queue. Usually, non-escape ADs have a really big problem, but the thing about Twitch is that he has resets and stealth, which make him extra good in solo queue. I think in non-competitive play, stealth is the most broken mechanic because people are typically not paying too much attention to where the AD carry is. And they only see what's on their screen because their map awareness is really low. So with that being said, you're usually going to be able to get free kills mid, early, late game, whatever, just because people aren't paying enough attention to where you could be and whether or not you're missing on the map. So the only thing you should really look out for in solo queue is getting three or four man early game. If you get really far behind on Twitch, he has a hard time farming. But the fact that Runons was changed to be a core item on him kind of mitigates that a little bit. As soon as you get Runons, you can just push up the wave really quickly and look for fights or look to roam. Twitch is a pretty volatile lane because in purely 2v2, he's actually quite strong and he's really hard to punish because he just has such overwhelming damage. But on the flip side, he's really easy to gank too. So you don't want to push up and play too aggressive or else you might die. That's why I typically go level three ambush because even though it feels bad for laning, it's the easiest way to die is going to an expunge and then getting ganked to level three. So in your laning phase, try to play aggressive, but I like to use the term like a tight aggressive where you're playing up, but you're also keeping in mind the mid can roam, top lane can TP behind you and you can get ganked. So with that being said, your laning phase usually on Twitch, you should probably be winning. If you're not winning lane on Twitch uh, with no jungle pressure being put on you, then try to like reassess how you're using your W, your auto attacks, and your E. As soon as you hit level 6, going for kills is super easy. You can hit the enemy AD carry and he can't even hit you back. So in terms of like overall laning, I think Twitch is one of the best. And if you can just really get down the mechanics of him, you should be able to win lane consistently. Teamfights are also a place where Twitch can excel really well. So because of the new change to Q, as soon as you get one kill, you can stealth again. And this usually results in chasing down multiple kills. So you're really in teamfights, you're hunting that reset. But also, you have the option of, instead of hitting front lines, just ulting and opening on the back line. So he's so versatile in teamfights, you can just focus front line and get the initial reset. Or you can ulti and shoot through the front line, hit the back line, and chunk whoever is like doing damage. So for example, Lucian or Sivir, they only have 500 range. So you can just hit them, and that's a 350 range disparity where they can't hit you back. Um, Teamfights is definitely another place where Twitch does well. Uh, so really you're looking for fights in like, tight corridors where your ulti can pierce as many people as possible. But also in open spaces is fine too, like you can just abuse your range. Um, just all around, uh, good thing to look for getting into 4v4s or 5v5s. Twitch does best if your team comp has some protection. Usually that means CC or knockbacks, zoning. Uh, he does the worst when your team kind of does your job for you. So if your team has something like a Zed or a Fizz or basically like a lot of assassins like, I don't know, Rengar, um, top lane would be like Fiora, then really you're not going to have any sort of peel and you have no escape. So keeping that in mind, when your team does have zones such as like Orianna or Lulu or like a support Janna or Morgana, that's when Twitch does the best because he just needs space to use his ulti and get resets. And he's kind of like a one-man show where he's the hyper carry and he needs resources, he needs zoning and protection, and then he can just do an insane amount of damage. Um, without that, probably not the ultimate time to pick him in solo queue. You might get zerged in team fights and not really do anything. So my first tip would be mashing Q at all times because you never really know who you hit with your runons and your ulti in a fight or a skirmish. Really, you're probably just going to press ulti attack two or three times and everyone on the enemy team is going to be poisoned. And at that point, you really have no way to keep full track of all five people on the enemy team's HP bars. Somebody could disappear into fog and like get hit by a skill shot and die. And I've definitely missed kills before because I wasn't mashing my Q and abusing that reset when I, I just wasn't aware that somebody had gotten poisoned in the first place. Just the way runons and ulti interact, you should try to be as like aware as possible that Q resets come really quickly. For runes, I run a standard attack speed quince, AD reds, armor yellows, and MR blues. This is just the standard AD carry rune page for pretty much all champions. And as for variations, you can run scaling magic resist if their bottom lane has no magic damage. For masteries, I run 
12, 18, 0. Uh, I take all of the obvious ferocity tree points like attack speed, feast, vampirism, and bounty hunter. And in cunning, I do pretty typical savagery for last hitting, biscuits for better sustain in lane, merciless for more damage, dangerous game for the resets, um, armor pen and magic pen from precision, and thunderlord's decree. Level 1, take Expunge always. Um, level 2, you can either go Stealth or W, depending on the matchup. And then level 3, you should probably try to take all three of your abilities, just in case you get ganked. Um, afterwards, max E first, then Q, and then lastly, max W. The reason why you'd max Q is Stealth just provides so much mid-game pressure, and it's also your attack speed steroid. The other thing is that previously, your Q would only be kind of a one-off thing, but now that you it resets on kills. You can use ambush anywhere from one to five times in a team fight, so it's best to max it for more attack speed, a longer stealth, and the potential to use it multiple times. Twitch's build is usually all over the place early. Uh, you're probably gonna have something along the lines of a BF and then three daggers. Uh, if you can, try to get your BF sword on your first base or second base. That's generally the kind of ballpark you're aiming for, is 1300 gold. If you can't do that, just get pickaxe and then start building runons. When you build runons, just get as many components as possible, so three daggers and a, a brawler's glove is usually what I do. After you finish your infinity edge and runons, you can do pretty much anything. Um, you can do a second zeal item, or you can do mercurial or bloodthirster. You can even do last whisper if their front line is super tanky. It just really depends on the situation, but ultimately you're going to end up with uh, whatever suits the game. So if it's stacking the two lifestyle items, Mercurial and BT, if it's getting um, Last Whisper, actually in most games I don't even get the Last Whisper item, I'll just do double attack speed and double lifesteal. So it really just depends on how the game is going and what champions are in it. For example, if they have a Dr. Mundo, you're probably going to need to get the Lord Dominic's Regards or Mortal Reminder item. Thanks for watching my guide to Twitch, and make sure to check out the rest of the guys over at lawclass.com.